Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time I'm going to wrap up the section on reports by just showing you some more things in the Northwind database. You can teach yourself so much because you can open up these reports and reverse engineer them and teach yourself techniques that you can use on your own reports. But I want to prioritize a couple of really great reports in this sample database. First is products by category. It's got three columns. I just want to show you how those three columns were created in Design View. In Design View, we're only showing one of the columns. Here's a report header section, the page header, category name header, so we know products are grouped by category name. And then within each category, they're also sorted by product name. But we only see one column. How are the three columns created? Well, that's simpler than you would think. It's on the page setup ribbon in the columns tab, and that's where we define how many columns we want, space between the columns and the width of the column. So that when we look at this in print preview, we've got three inch wide columns and then there's a quarter inch between them. Our first category is beverages. Our records are grouped by category of beverages, then condiments and confections. You see how that's alphabetical. And then within each group, within each category, they're alphabetically sorted by product name. And here's a subtotal in the category order section. That expression is merely counting the product names. So that's a cool report to examine. Another one I want to bring your attention to that's really extraordinary is the invoice report. Now when I double click this invoice report, it's prompting me for a beginning date and I'm going to type in 8194 and an ending date. I'm going to try 8594 and see what the report produces. And when I maximize this the report produces a two page report, each page is its own invoice. If I zoom in to look at this, I can see that the first Page, first invoice is on order date 8594 and it has two line items. If we go to the second page, it's an invoice that's for Alfred's Futurkist and it's shipped to a different location and it's got three line items on it. Its order date is 8494. I'm seeing that this report is displaying only those orders for the date range that I was prompted when I opened the report. And that's very cool because that's very flexible. It allows you to see a different set of records every time you open the report. So it's important to be able to understand how that happened. And we're going to go into Design View and figure it out. But before we go into Design View, let's also examine this report, the report section. If I go back and forth through the two pages of this report, I can see that this information at the top, graphic, Northwind Traders, the label invoice, the date, the line, the address, none of that is changing as I move from page to page. Evidently, all those controls are in the page header section. As I move from page to page, though, I see that the ship to, the bill to, the order ID information, all of that is changing per order. So that must be in the order ID header section. The products that have been ordered, product ID, product name, quantity, unit price, discount, and extended price, all of that is changing for every record. So I'm expecting that there are one, two, three, four, five, six text boxes in the detail section to present that data. And then at the bottom here, we have subtotals that are changing per order. So I'm expecting that to be in the order ID footer section. Let's go into design view and see how we did. And here's our page header section with all the controls that we expected. Here's our order ID section with the information that's unique per order where we're shipping it, where we're billing it, the order information itself. There's some labels that they've highlighted in a dark blue on the background and some text boxes that give us that information per order. Even the labels that identify the products in the detail section are at the bottom of the order ID header section so that they only print once. Because here's our one, two, three, four, five, six text boxes in the detail section which print off once every record in that order, once for every product or order item in that order. And then here's our order the footer section, just as we had expected, because it's subtotaling the extended price for the entire order, the freight, and the subtotal plus the freight then gives us our total for the invoice. So that information prints once per order. So examining these pre-existing reports can really help you understand how the report sections on a report work. But let's get back to that prompt. Remember when we opened up this report and it prompted us for a start date and an end date? How did that happen? Well, remember that the records for a report are based on the record source property of the report itself. 
and we open up the property sheet for the report itself, look at the record source property, and we see the word invoices. That means that the record source for this report is the invoices query. If we build on that invoices query, we open that query up in design view, and we see the one, two, three, four, five, six tables, their relationships that are used to create this excellent report. If I scroll over to the right here in the order date field, I see some really interesting criteria. That's called parameter criteria. Anytime you see criteria in square brackets, it's going to prompt the user when the query runs for information. And then that information will take the place of the prompt. So if I open this up, I try to do this query in data sheet view, it's going to prompt me what occurs inside the square brackets. And I'm going to use that same criteria, August 1st of 1994, and an ending date of August 5th of 1994, and see what records are selected for that date range. Five records are selected that have an order date between August 1st of 1994 and August 5th of 1994. Now these five records are three line items on one of the invoices and two line items on the other invoice. I'm going to close this query, reopen this report, put in the same criteria, examine it in report view. And here's my first invoice. Here's my invoice date of August 5th, 1994 with its two line items. And here's my invoice of August 4th with three line items, a different customer. So in summary, reports are a great way to present and share data. Once a report is created, you can share it electronically or print it out. There are an infinite number of ways you can modify a report. Once you know a thimbleful of key items, which is the record source property of the report, the difference between a label and a text box, and report sections, you are well on your way to building your own reports and reverse engineering the reports that the Northwind database has provided. Thank you.